Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jumu'ah Mubarak and Ramadan Kareem. And I can hear you say, Allahu Akram. That's the answer when you say Ramadan Kareem. Okay, we've still got a few hours of Friday left. There's a few hours left. So what are you going to do? One, we're going to remember our marhumin as much as possible. Write down their names, recite Surah Al-Fatiha for them, remember them. Because Allah forgives so many on the Fridays in Ramadan. You will recite lots of salawats. You recite um, Aytul Kursi for your memory. You will recite Istighfar as much as possible. And you know what? This is the time to do dua. As the sun is setting, just go outside. It's not too cold today. And do dua. My goodness. When the sun sets on a Friday, just before these last hours, just go do dua for what you want. It's Ramadan. There's mercy, forgiveness, so much floating around. And it's Friday. My goodness, what else do you want? Raise your hands in dua. And when you pray for somebody else, it always works. So go find somebody who loves you very much and ask them to pray for you. Okay, so we're going to start off with the dua that I talked about that we're going to do every single day. And we're going to talk about this all the time. When we can, how we can, all the rest of it. Okay? So, what does that dua say? This is from the Sermon of the Prophet. And he says, Fas'alullah rabbukum. Ask Allah your Rabb. And remember, raise your hands. Biniyatin sadika, Which is a very truthful intention. Wa qulubin tahira. And pure hearts. What you want to ask him? Number one. That we're able to fast. And I talked about fasting. It was not just not eating and not drinking. It's fasting with our whole body. That we're able to recite his book. We're able to do tawbah. Remember he said, the most unfortunate is the one who is not forgiven. And he says, The doors of Jannah are open. Pray that he doesn't close the doors of Jannah. Number five. He says, The doors of Jahannam are closed. Pray that he never, They never open them for you. Shaitan is imprisoned. That he never frees Shaitan. These are the six things we're going to pray for every single day. But today, our focus is going to be Jews 4. Now, Jews 4 is the fourth Jews, obviously. And if we look at this, this Jews, it has part of Surah Al Imran and it's got part of Surah Al Nisa. All right, so we've got a little bit of Al Imran and we've got a little bit of Nisa. And then we've got the shelf up there. And on the shelf, you can see a knickknack. Now, that knickknack, in essence, is what I call Bitana, friends. Can you see that? Let me try and adjust this for you. Okay, so it's Bitana, friends. What are Bitana, friends? We're going to talk about it when we get there, okay? But first, we're going to recite the first ruku. That means the first section of the Jews 4. So if you're ready, recite it with me. It's on your screens and you can recite it with me. So let's start. Remember what we start with? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. And bismillah, let's start. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم كل الطعام كان حلا لبني إسرائيل إلا ما حرم إسرائيل على نفسه من قبل أن تنزل التوراة قل فأتوا بالتوراة فاتلوها إن كنتم صادقين فمن افترى على الله الكذب من بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الظالمون قل صدق الله فاتبعوا ملة إبراهيم هنيفا وما كان من المشركين إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببقة مباركا وهدى للعالمين فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان عامنا ولله على الناس هج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين 
قل يا أهل الكتاب لما تكفرون بآيات الله والله شهيد على ما تعملون قل يا أهل الكتاب لما تسدون عن سبيل الله من آمن تبغون عوجا وأنتم شهداء وما الله بغافل أما تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تطيعوا فريقا من الذين أوتوا الكتاب يردوكم بعد إيمانكم كافرين وكيف تكفرون وأنتم تتلى عليكم آيات الله وفيكم رسوله ومن يعتسم بالله فقد هدي إلى سرات مستقيم صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد So we're now going to recite the three small du'as. I call them small du'as, but they've got so much in them. I shouldn't really be calling them small du'as. The three important du'as. Now the translations are under there, so most of you will know them. Well, as you read them with me, look at the translation and the picture and they'll tell you all about it. So please recite with me and loudly. It's so important, okay? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا غفور يا رحيم أنت الرب العظيم الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر عظمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت سيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا ذا المني ولا يون عليك من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار في من تمن علي وادخلني الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم أكس كل عريان اللهم أقضي دين كل مدين اللهم فرجا كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل عسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بهسن حالك اللهم اقضي أن الدين وأغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وافترضت على عبادك فيه الصيام صل على محمد وعلى محمد وارزقني هج بيتك الحرام في عام هذا وفي كل عام واغفر لي تلك الذنوب العظام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا علام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد We've been looking at extracts from Dua Abu Hamza Thimali, a dua that was taught to Abu Hamza Thimali by Imam Zain al Abidin. It's a beautiful dua, and as I've told you before, it's a long dua recommended to be recited at Sehri time. 
but we're doing extracts from it and you can use them throughout the year it's the way we think and the ah tells us how we think so let's start alhamdulillah alladhi praise and gratitude is to allah alladhi la ad'u ghayruhu He's the only one that I call out to. Dua is calling out to someone who's far, actually calling out loudly. And we say, walau da'autu. If I called out loudly, ghayrahu, to somebody else, lam yastajibli du'ai. They would not answer me. Call out to him, talk to him as much as possible. Tell him in your language, in your qunut in salah, just talk to him. Talk to him in whatever language you want, he understands. And tell him. Plead to him. So we're now going to take extracts from the Sermon of the Prophet. And let's continue from where we left off. He says, Raise your hands in dua at the times of salah. You know, this is why I say you should know every single time of salah. I know everybody knows the time of iftar in Ramadan. Everybody knows the time of sahri in Ramadan. What about other months? What about the times for, for, for um, Zahar? What about Asr? What about Isha? You know, even if you finish praying Zahar and Asr together, find the time of Asr and raise your hands in the You don't have to be home. You can be wherever you are. Mind you, in lockdown, there's not many places you can go. I know things are opening up. But even when you are wherever you are, keep the times of Salah with you. These days you can get them on your phone. Raise your hand. Because he says, فَإِنَّهَا أَفْضَلُ sa'at." These are the best of times. And he says, raise them up. Ask him. What happens at these times? Allah looks towards his people, his abd, those who are connected to him. That's why you've got a person there with a golden heart. He's connected to Allah. He looks at them with mercy. What does he do? وَيُجِيبُهُمْ إِذَا naju. He acknowledges their secret conversations. Munajat is a secret conversation. What else does he do? Wayulabihim ida nadahu. He accepts their pleas. You know, when you cry from your heart, Ya Allah, help me, I'm stuck. He accepts it. Wayutiahum ida saaluhu. He gives you what you ask for. Ask him. Wayastajibulahum ida da'ahu. And he answers their calls. These are times, he's telling you, times of salah. Ask me and I will do all these things. Even when you're talking from the heart, he will hear you. But now to our topic, which is a juza day. We're going to look at the bookshelf. 114 sur in 30 ajza. So you've got 30 different shelves in our bookshelf. And I'll repeat again, Quran divided into 30 equal parts. So you could find it easy to recite in a month. But in essence, it is revealed or the Prophet put it together in surah in chapters one surah 114 surah there are 6236 ayat which you can't see there but important to know if you were to memorize three ayat a day and you miss some in between to take six years it's actually every day if you did that it's five years 10 months and 13 days and we talked about ruku'at and we talked about the words now today we're going to focus on the fourth juz and that's from ayah 92 of Surah Al Imran to ayah 23 of Surah Tun Nisa. So we're going to look at two surahs now. So I'm hoping you've got your journaling tools ready. Let me show you what I have. There you go. Can you see all my pencil colors? There you go. Put them in a really pretty mug given to me by my friend. So you have all your journaling tools ready. And we're going to go back and journal. And I hope you've got your Quran ready as well. So here I have Isa Ali, like yesterday. And he, you can see how he is personalizing his Qur'an. So it's being able to personalize the Qur'an so you can connect to it. So when you open it, you see these ayat that you've highlighted. Oh, I know that one. And it's really important we do that. We actually connect with the Qur'an. So let's start. Before we start, you know what we have to do. Wudu, that's right. What else? You've got to recite in Arabic. If you can't recite in Arabic, start now. Recite. Learn how to recite. It's not that difficult at all. Always start with Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La ilaha illallah. And the dua of the Prophet. Walzam qalbi hifda kitabika kama allamtani. Make me commit my heart to your book as you have taught me. I want to fall in love with the Quran. That's basically what you are saying when you read that dua. 
So the first ayah we're going to look at is ayah number 92, which is the first ayah of this juice. Okay, 392. And I love this ayah, absolutely love it. Lan tanalul birra. You will never, ever, ever, ever. Lan is never, ever. You will never become bir. And remember, we talked about bir when we did Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm going to go back to it again. Bir is walking, talking righteousness. Bir comes from bar. Bar is the, the earth. And bahar is the sea. Bir, bir means stability. Somebody who, regardless of what happens, they are walking, talking righteous. Inside, out, everywhere. They are really good people. You'll never become good, he says. Hatta tunfiku. Until you give out in the way of Allah. Mimma tahibun. What you love the most. Absolutely what you love. Now, you know, sometimes we give things. When we give away things, that which we don't want. That's not giving away. That's them doing a favor by taking them from us. And he says here. Whatever you give in the way of Allah, He knows. So if you look at my Quran, this is 392, right here. And I have put here, Bir, I've put in green. And then I've written Bir there. And I've also put 2177. Because that's the ayah that it's connected to. Bir, to understand what Bir is, we've done it before. It's in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 1177. So you can write that. And then I put Tohibun in red and I put a heart there. So I know I've got to give out what I love the most. Everybody likes something. It could be anything. And I've written down here, it could be material wealth, it could be your time, it could be love. It could be your, anything you find really, really difficult to give out that you love the most. That's what you've got to give. And then you will become righteous, he says. So that's how I've underlined it. I've put that in dark green and the other bit in light green, as you can see. Okay, let's go back. Just to have a go over Bir. Bir was believing in five things. In Allah, in the last day, which means I know I'm accountable. The angels, the books, and the prophets. And how did it show itself? It showed itself by me being able to spend what I have to my close relations, the orphans, those in need, those who are refugees, those who ask and those who are imprisoned. How does it show in my personal life? I will always make sure, salah, wa akimis salah, my day revolves around namaz, salah, wa atu zakah, and I give zakah. And what sort of person comes out of it? A, a person who is bare always keeps his promises. A person who is bare will always have sabr. They will persevere and have patience when in hardship, when something afflicts them, and when they're in conflict. And finally, Allah tells them, what does he say? They have sabr. That means they are those who have patience, perseverance, and they are those who are God conscious. The next ayah we're going to highlight is 396 and 97. So I'm going to show it to you in my Quran so you can see it. You can see I've got 96 and 97. Now I've I've circled Linnas and I've circled Bakka. Can you see that? Right? And at the side I've put the Kaaba and I've put Hajj. And then here I've put Makame Ibrahim. And I could, whilst you're watching, I could circle Makame Ibrahim because it's really important. Now let's see what Allah is trying to say. He says, Inna awwala baytin, the first house dedicated for worship for Allah. Wudi ahlin nas, and it's for all people. It doesn't say it's only for Muslims or only for Jews or anything. It doesn't say that. Not Ahlul Kitab, not Christians, not in, it just wudi ahlin nas, the first place for worship that was made for people. Lilladi bi bakkata. Now Bakka was the ancient name of Makkah. So he said it was in Bakka for all people. And it was Mubarakan. Mubarakan mean, means it was blessed. Remember, whenever you go to Makkah. Whether you go for Hajj or Umrah, there is massive blessings. I mean, one rakah is pray, prayed at home is like 70 of, one rakah prayed over there is like 70 at home. There are so many blessings over there. So he says the place is blessed, the city is blessed. It's a means of guidance for all people. There are clear signs in it. And what were the clear signs from Ayah 97? Makamu Ibrahim. And you remember we talked about it. This was the stone that Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, stood on when he was building the Kaaba with Prophet Ismail. And the stone softened. And his, his footsteps got marked on there. 
And the stone was going up and down so you could actually build this. And you can see in the picture, it's covered with a golden like cage so that people don't ruin it. And if you looked into that cage, you can actually see the footprints of Ibrahim. Isn't it awesome? So you will highlight 96, 97. I will go back into it. You can highlight it. You can color it. You can draw the Kaaba at the side. You can put Hajj there. You could also draw Makami Ibrahim over there. And underneath I've written, inaugurated as a city dedicated to Allah was called Bakka and it's now called Makkah. Right, let's look at the next ayah. And the next ayah is 3118. And oh my goodness, I love this ayah. So this is talking about Bitana. And it's talking about Bitana friends. I'm going to show you in my um, Quran first. And you can see I've drawn a big heart and I've put belly friends. Now if you Google belly friends, it means people who are pregnant. So pregnant friends are known as belly friends. My daughter's pregnant right now. So if she had a friend who was pregnant, they'd be belly friends. But this is something different. So I need to remember what this means. You know bitana means belly or button means belly. So a bitana friend is a trusted friend, is a friend whom you can tell your secrets to. You can tell everything to. And you've got to find Bitana friends. You must have a Bitana friend. It's a trusted friend. A Bitana friend is someone who can have tough conversations with you, who will hear everything you have to say and will never tell them to anyone. And they will help you through whatever you're going through. So what does this say? This says, Ya you alladina amanu, O you who believe, La tattakhidhu bitanatam min dunikum. Don't ever take bitana friends from other than those who believe in Allah, who believe in the Prophet, who are like you, who believe like you, who are spiritually connected to you. And it's really important because he says, if you do take other than that, they will become khabala. And khabala is those who cause you pain. So he's telling you, when you take friends, take those who are spiritually connected to you. Look how I've highlighted it. So I've highlighted Ya Ayyuhalladheena Amanu in green. And then I put Bitana. And it's wonderful to have a Bitana friend. Really, really wonderful. And I've highlighted Min Dunikum. Which means take Bitana friends from those who are spiritually connected to you. Really, really important. And the ayah says anybody else who is not spiritually connected to you. Um, it doesn't say don't be friends with them. It doesn't say don't talk to them. It doesn't say don't like them. It just says don't be bitana friends. They are special, special friends who actually understand you inside and out. I love this ayah. Oh, and then I love this ayah even more. This is beautiful. And it's ayah 133. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit more because, I mean, I just adore this ayah. So what does Allah say here? Um, I think the ayah here is not the one that's supposed to be there. So I'm going to go back to the Quran and you're going to look at it in my Quran. Okay, so it says here. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Run, it says, my goodness, run to forgiveness. It's just something else. He says run, just run as much as you can. Run to forgiveness. Why does he say that? And what is forgiveness? So, ghifar is a helmet. Is a helmet that the we person wears to protect his head. Istighfar is actually asking Allah to protect us from ourselves and the mistakes we make. It's really, really important to understand. So he says, run to protect yourself. Run to do istighfar. You know, um, in between sajda, we say astaghfirullah harabbi wa atubu ilayh so basically what we're doing in between sajda is our mind is wandering away and we are bringing back our mind right back to where it's supposed to be now what does he say he says sariu ila maghfiratin mir rabbika wa jannatin arduha samawati wal ard he says when you ask for forgiveness you will get a jannah who is so wide it is like the heavens and the earth that's amazing and then what does he say he said he has made this jannah for those who have taqwa so he has made this jannah for those who are god conscious so say ya allah who are these people 
and he gives a description in I 134. So I'd like you to highlight it just like I have highlighted. He says, Alladina yunfikuna fissara'i wadharra. Oh my goodness, they spend in easy and hard times. Walqadimina al ghayb. The other thing they do is that they control their anger. You know, we have Imam Musa Qadim. See, Qadim, and I've written it down here. Qadim is this nasal passage here. You know, when you say, I've had it up to here. Qadim is a person who is so, whose anger is here, who's so frustrated, but doesn't show it at all. In, in other words, they self-control. They have control over their anger. They have control over everything. They are just amazing people. So it says, Wal afina anin nas. And they forgive people. Not only just forgive, he says, afina. They lovingly forgive people. What else do they do? But first he says, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those who actually do good, not only good, who do their best. So that's why I've highlighted that in red and I've put a, a star there. Now he says something else, the fourth thing. Walladina idha fa'alu fahishatan aw dhalamu anfusahum. When they do something that is um that is indecent, that is not nice at all. They do, they do bad stuffs. Or when they wrong themselves in anywhere, immediately, right away, what do they do? Dhaqarullaha, they remember Allah. Fastaghfiru li dhunubihim. And they ask for forgiveness of their, selves, of their sins. So these are the five things about them. One, they spend in easy and hard times. That means they give in the way of Allah when it's difficult times and easy times. They refrain their anger. They've got self control They lovingly forgive people. Even if these people deserve to be punished, they forgive them. When they do something that's indecent or they do something that's wrong, they remember Allah immediately. And they say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa and they correct their mistakes. Absolutely phenomenal. So he says, run. And he's telling Jannah for people who've done something wrong. He says, I'm going to build a Jannah for you if you ask for forgiveness. I'm going to give you three words. Ghafir is the name of Allah. We are saying, Ya Allah, cover my sins from others. Ghafar, you're saying, Ya Allah. Hide it from me as well because it bothers me. I've already done this that far. I've made it, I've corrected it. And Ghafoor is hiding it from those whom you can't see, like the spirits and the angels, and we don't want, we don't want them to see our sins as well. Right, let's go to the next ayah. The next ayah is ayah number 160. And that says, oh, that's really amazing again. In yansurkumullahu fala ghaliba lakum, he says. He says, if you, it's, 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 he's trying to tell you and me that if you help Allah, if Allah helps you, nobody can overpower you. If he is on your side, nobody, nobody can overpower you. You know what? Yahudul is. It comes from Khadul. Khadul is a friend who abandons you at the time of need. So he says, if Allah was to leave you, if he was to abandon you, who will be able to be to help you? You must trust Allah, he says. So do your best, hand it over to him, and trust him. So however I highlighted it, let's find it. Do you remember what ayah it was? So 160 and if you look here I've highlighted it so I've put in in green and then I've put wa in that I've put in brown because we don't want Allah to leave us in our hours of need so that means whenever we are in need in good times and bad times we remember Allah and just before that Allah says inna Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin so if you look at ayah 159 you can actually put you can decolor it in red and put a red heart there and say, Inna Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Allah loves those who trust in Him. Let's look at the next ayah. Oh my goodness, this is just amazing. So this is the last one we're going to look at today. And this is about Tawbah. Now what does Allah say here? So we're going to go to Surah number 4, which is Surah An-Nisa. And we're going to go to Ayah 17. Okay. Now these all go together. So you read them with me. Let's start first with this. Innamat Tawbatu. So he says, indeed Tawbah. 
it is for those lilladina ya'maluna su'a bi jahalati su is one sin those who do something wrong while they are emotionally overcome jahala means you may know you're doing something wrong but you just couldn't help it you just got overcome by emotion now if you did that thumma yatubuna then you did toba you turned back ya allah i'm not going to do this again i'm really sorry min karib and you turn to allah quickly fa ulaika yatubu allah alayhim allah will turn to you wa kana allah aliman hakima and allah is all knowing and all wise now let's look at it in my quran so if you can see inna tawba i've, I've um, highlighted tawba and i've highlighted ya'maluna su amal means something you know about it's not fail it's not subconscious consciously doing it so if you did a hidden and ugly deed if you did that a miss um, you know a, a, a bad thing and you did it be jahala jahala means you were overcome by emotion allah will forgive you and he says but look what he says after that he said wa laysat at tawbah but tawbah is not for the one alladhina ya'maluna as-sayi'at who does repetitive deeds that was so remember here so one deed here sayi'at continually does wrong if you look here i've written up here continuing con- to do sins he says that's not who tawba is for hatta idha hadara hadahu almaut and then only when death comes qala he says inni tubtu alan i am going to do tawba allah says i will not accept it so it's really important to look at these two ayat together when we do something wrong to ask for forgiveness and then to say ya allah i promise you i'll try my best that i will never do this again so we've completed or we've finished the fourth juz in the sense we've highlighted we've um we've uh, journaled in other words the this the ayat from there let's go back and recite surah al-fatiha for all those who are ill for our marhumin especially today remember our marhumin and those who are in trouble let's recite the dua for um protection and we recite the ziyara of abdullah so recite with me bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladina an'amta alayhim ghayril maghdubi alayhim waladhdallin ask allah to to forgive all the marhumin think about them pray for those who are ill and those who are in trouble li khamsatun atfi biha harra alwaba il hatima al mustafa wal murtada wa abnahuma wal fatima السلام عليك يا ابا عبد الله وعلى الارواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله يا ابدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله اخر لحظه مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي ابن الحسين وعلى اولاد الحسين وعلى اصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد في امان الله كريم ان شاء الله اسيو تو مورو ات ذا سيم تايم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع